Hi, and welcome back to Canada Top to Bottom. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about spousal sponsorship. So spousal sponsorship in Canada. Um, I'm going to talk about the requirements for both the person who is sponsoring and also the person who is being sponsored. So the person who is sponsoring is the person who's in Canada. So either a Canadian citizen or a Canadian permanent resident. The person who is being sponsored is the principal applicant who is not a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, but you are sponsoring them for permanent residency in Canada. So this person can either be your spouse, it can be your common law partner, it can be your conjugal partner, or it can also be a dependent child that you are sponsoring for permanent residence in Canada. For more information on the definition of any of these things, please click on the link in the description box below. So uh, the reason why we're going to talk about this today is because spousal sponsorship sounds like it should be quite simple. Um, you just sponsor your spouse to come to Canada to become a permanent resident, but it's not simple at all. It's, it's, it's a, first of all, it's lengthy. It's a lengthy application process. It's, um, the current processing time is 16 months for sponsoring a spouse who's currently living outside of Canada. So it's a long process. It's quite complicated and the process isn't always that clear. It's not 100%, it's not crystal clear exactly what you need to provide, exactly what the person being sponsors need, needs to provide. It, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, the thing about a long processing time is, if it takes 16 months, it could be longer. It could be shorter, it could be longer. That's just the average processing time. So if it's longer, who knows? It could take a year and a half, it could take up to two years. If your application was not completed correctly at the beginning, it may well just be returned to you with unsigned documents, with missing documentation, with other things that they are requiring. And then the whole processing just starts all over again. So it's very, very important to get it right the first time. Now, the really big thing about spousal sponsorship or sponsoring your partner to Canada is it's very, very highly scrutinized. It's very highly scrutinized because Canada is very wary of essentially shotgun marriages. People who just get married to a Canadian permanent resident or a Canadian citizen just for the purpose of gaining permanent residence themselves. It's quite common and visa officers are very aware of it and on the lookout for it. So a spousal sponsorship application will be highly scrutinized not just for have you completed all your application forms and provided all the required documents, but can you prove that your relationship is genuine? So that's what's, that's what's really highly scrutinized. How genuine is your relationship? So documents which are going to be required. So first of all, for the person who is sponsoring, so this is the person who is already a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, it's, the, the main thing you need to provide is proof of that. So your permanent resident card or your Canadian passport to show that you are a Canadian citizen. Um, the other thing that you need to show is to sponsor a spouse to, for permanent residence in Canada, a spouse or a partner, you don't need to provide proof of income. There is no income requirement. However, you do need to show that you have uh, enough money to support the person so that they won't have to use um, benefits, the benefit system in Canada. So if you're employed, you need to provide your employment documents, your, your proof of employment, your pay slips, your tax assessment from the CRA, all the documentation to show that you are currently employed and earning. Um, you can also sponsor your spouse if you're not working, but in that case you will need to show that you've got savings. You will need to provide a bank account to show that you've got um, savings. There's no specific amount of money like there is for other applications where you have to provide a certain amount of money, but you do need to show that the person that you are sponsoring is not going to be using the benefits system of Canada. Um, so for the person who is being sponsored, of course you'll need, you're going to need to show ID, passport documents, etc. You'll also need to show a police certificate, and this is for anybody over the age of 18, for any country that they've lived in for more than six months. So their country of residency or citizenship will be the obvious one. 
but if they have lived anywhere else for six months, they'll need a police certificate for that place as well. The other thing they'll need is a digital photograph, so passport photo with the correct dimensions, and also a medical exam. So anybody that's coming to Canada to live permanently needs to, needs to provide proof of a medical exam. Um, so that brings me on to the most important part of this application to sponsor your spouse or partner to Canada. Proof of your relationship. Can you prove that you're to a visa officer reading your application that your relationship is genuine? Now, just providing your marriage certificate is not enough. You may have got married yesterday. You may have got married last week or last month. The marriage might be brand new, which is the case for a lot of people. They get married and they then want to sponsor their new spouse. Uh, but the marriage certificate is not enough. You run the, a huge risk of the application being rejected because they don't believe that the marriage is genuine because it's brand new and there's no further documentation to show how long the relationship has been going on for. So this is where the, this is where the bulk of your documentation and your proof is going to come in. Um, so for example, if you are living together or if you have been living together, you will need to show either a rental agreement with both your names on it, like a lease agreement, um, or home ownership with both your names on it to show that you've been living together. If you don't live together, then you need to show why. So for example, are you separated because of an immigration barrier um, or you know, whatever the situation may be, why aren't you living together? And in that case, you need to show proof of contact between the two of you. So proof of contact, like have you flown to see each other? Have you got those flight tickets? Um, have, you, um, have you been in constant contact through phone calls, through text messages, through video calls? Whatever that may be, through emails, you need to show proof of these things. So it's not, it's not necessarily a designated set list, which is the same for every single application. It's going to be individual to your specific situation, depending on whether you're currently living together, whether you're living in separate countries, how long you've known each other, how far back you can date your relationship. So things that you'll need to show are evidence of financial support between the two of you. So do you have a joint bank account? Um, do you transfer money to each other to support each other financially? Do you have evidence of adding your spouse to your health insurance once you got married? For example, you can show the documentation for that. Um, and then things like photographs. You will need to provide photographs as far back as you can possibly go. So if your relationship started five years ago, have you got photographs from when you started dating, when you when you first got together, any trips you've been on, any um, any times that you met each other's family, any times you went to visit each other. So how far back can you date these photographs? And what you'll need to do is show evidence um, in the form of you know put it all together in a document and say in this photograph these are the people in it and this is what's happening. So it, it really goes that detailed. It really goes into that much detail, showing exactly who's in which picture, how long ago it was taken, the date it was taken, where you were, those kind of things. So um, photographs not just of the two of you, but two of you with your family and friends, showing that your relationship is recognized by your family and friends. Photos of your wedding, if you are married, if you're not common law partners, photos of your wedding, photos of your engagement, any formal documents, um, invitations, anything to show that it was a genuine wedding with um, you know, with uh, with your guests, with the outside the church in the reception, showing that it was a it was a it was a you know a genuine wedding. It wasn't just the two of you on your own. Um, so social media posts is another huge way of proving your relationship these days. So Instagram, Facebook, whatever it may be, social media posts are great because they're time stamped. You can screenshot your social media post and it will have a day and a time on it. It will show exactly when that was posted. And it's very useful because it can show friends recognize, friends and family recognizing your relationship. So commenting on your wedding, things like, you know, congratulations, you guys, it looks like a wonderful day. Screenshot it and include it in your application. 
Um, so social media posts, messages, proof that the relationship is sanctioned by your friends and your family, that they're, you know, they, they welcome it, they, they, they know about it. Um, other things like proof of contact. So you would actually send, you can send phone records highlighting all of the phone calls that you've made to each other. Uh, things like WhatsApp is very useful because you can go back and screenshot all of the phone calls to and from the incoming and the outgoing phone calls. Um, screenshots of when you've had video calls together, again with a timestamp on it, is really useful. So if your relationship is 10 years old, if you met 10 years ago, then you don't need to show... IRCC officers do not want to see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of text messages, but what they want to see is here are some text messages and photos and whatever it may be, video calls, contact from 10 years ago, here's some from seven years ago, here's some from four years ago, and here's some recent ones. So, you know, all the way through. Um, flight tickets to go and see each other, as I mentioned. If you haven't flown to see each other, if one of you's in Canada and one of you's in a different country, if you haven't been able to come and see each other, why not? So explain why not. So you've been in a relationship for two years, but you've never flown to see each other. Why not? Is it an immigration issue? So is your spouse, are you in Canada? Is your spouse in a different country and they've tried to get a visa but have been denied to come to Canada? Show evidence of that. My spouse tried to come to Canada and visit me, but she was denied her visa and here's the evidence. Otherwise she would have come and visited me. Um, so another thing, another very important thing is letters, letters of support from your family and friends. So from parents, from grandparents, uncles, aunties, close friends, friends who've known you since, you know, for a long time, since the two of you got together. Literally a letter saying, I have known these two people since 2017 and detailing where they met, when they met, what your relationship is to them and why you believe that it's a, it's a good fit. So supporting the relationship. It's literally letters of support from family and friends. Not, not lots and lots, but sort of three for each side, for example. Uh, family's a really good one. If you've got a letter from your mum saying that she supports your spouse, your relationship with your spouse, then that's great. That really shows that it's a, it's a genuine marriage. Um, a supporting letter from you detailing the, the details of your relationship. So like I said, where you met, when you met, what, how your relationship has developed since you met, um, you know, what, what, what the circumstances were that one of you moved, ended up moving to Canada and the other one stayed behind and, you know, what, talk about your relationship. That visa officer is looking at a piece of paper. They're not looking at you. They don't know you. Everything they know about you is going to be coming, coming to them through that, you know, through that letter from you. Um, and then the final thing is, if you have children together, then obviously show the evidence of these children. You know, birth certificates detailing both your names on them. Um, so, yeah, there is a lot. There is a lot to do when you are sponsoring a spouse. And as I said, it's highly scrutinized. It can be, it can be quite a complex process. And what you don't want is months and months and months and months and months of processing when your spouse isn't able to come with you. So this whole processing time, you're separated for a lot of people. You want it to be done as fast as possible. And the last thing you want is for it all to come back to you and say, we need more documentation from you. This wasn't completed correctly because that's just heartbreaking because then you have to just do it all again and send it back and start, you know, start your processing time again. So, it can all take a long time, but it's absolutely worth it because if you are a permanent resident or a citizen of Canada, you are absolutely entitled to sponsor your spouse or your partner to come for permanent residence in Canada. So just do it right would be my advice. Make sure you do it right the first time. Um, you know, gather everything together. If you need assistance from a professional, then by all means book a consultation talk to somebody about it before you start this process because doing it right is very, very important. Um, please let us know if this is something that you're considering and we'd love to hear from you. And yeah, any questions, please get in touch and we'll see you next time on Canada Top to Bottom. Bye.